So, so the Honda Accord. Now, it's kind of often that at night or just in the morning whenever I'm bored, I'm looking at some of the inventory in some of the local junkyards because this car, there's some loose ends on here that I didn't really care about as I was just dailying it. Now that I'm putting all of this work into it, I want to make it a little bit nicer. For example, one of the things that's really weird that I want to address is the side view mirror. That's that's just how it came from the factory. If you got a 1988 Honda Accord DX hatchback, that's what you got. You only got one side view mirror. I don't know why they did that, but I've drove the car for over seven years without having a passenger side view mirror. And now that we got all this power, now that I'm gonna be taking it out a lot further, I'm just gonna want a mirror. I mean, even if I'm not taking it out far, I wanna get a mirror. So I actually found an Accord at the junkyard. It's a 1986. I don't know how long it's been there. I'll check once I get there. There's a couple little things that I'm going to need. If I can just get some things i'll be happy so we're gonna make our way over to the junkyard and then we gotta come back pretty quickly because we got a lot of stuff to do and now you're watching the realization that is if you have a toddler and a dog whatever the toddler eats the dog will also eat channel of youtube welcome to bodhi vision Alright, so here we go. Here we have this beautiful four-door. Now, it's been here a little while. I was honestly hoping to get a little bit more parts off of it than what I could actually find. But I did get a couple things, so I definitely am glad that I made it out here. So, if you can see these, this piece right here, are these right there. And this one has a little crack in it. This one is pretty good. Now, the ones on my car at the shop, the LS swap one, are really messed up. So, those are really good. Also, we got side view mirrors. And these are actually power mirrors, so I just cut off the pigtails. And that way, hopefully, I can wire them up. If I can't, it's all good. As long as I have that passenger mirror, I'm going to be happy. So I'm going to go ahead and see how much they want for all this stuff. It's all pretty beat up, and I know they're going to charge me a lot for it. But either way, I need it. I'm glad it came out. And then we'll make our way back to the shop. All right, so we are back at the shop now. And one thing, as I was at the junkyard, it was important for me to make sure that I remembered to get the little pieces that go on the inside of the car because with those being power mirrors and what I have is a manual mirror, I only have one anyways, it's just this style where you move this thing. So I want the plate that covers it. So I grabbed that from the junkyard along with all the hardware to mount them. So everything should be pretty straightforward and easy. And also another thing, one thing that was weird about the car, the actual switch for all of this stuff was missing. So I'm just gonna maybe make something. But we just have my 12 volt power supplier right here. If I just hit this switch right there, you can see that it is working. And then if you reverse these, then hit the switch, it'll go the other way. So from 1986, that ugly green four door was a 1986. This Accord generation ran from 1986 through 89. So a lot of these parts are interchangeable. The entire front end, side view mirrors, a lot of things are, like I said, they're interchangeable. So the motors work, that's all good. The switch wasn't there, but that's okay. I can make a switch really easily. Maybe I can even wire it into my dash and have that on a switch. I know you can do stuff like that, but I don't, that's a little bit overkill. But either way, the motors work, that's all I cared about. So now that's, that's an upgrade. We're upgrading this thing everywhere. This entire thing is going to be upgraded. And speaking of things that have already been upgraded is the motor. We were waiting on some gaskets to put it back together. Also, I was waiting on some hardware. I was waiting on a whole bunch of other things, but I have all of that stuff now. So what I wanna focus on is final assembly of the motor. Yeah, uh, the other thing that I was waiting on was the trunnion upgrade. I don't know why I forgot. That was the biggest thing that I was waiting for. Either way, what we have right here, these are the stock rockers. This is how they look. And this is actually the trunnion upgrade. So I went ahead and I did one just so that way I could show you the difference. So the old style, the style that we need to upgrade is like this. And this is just pressed in there. And this has all kinds of needle bearings. So this is one that I just took apart. And if you can see, if I just, all those little pieces in there, those are the needle bearings. So if this falls apart, which it's prone to do, and then you get all these 
throughout your motor, that's not at all a good time. So the way that the upgrade works is we just have this brass piece right here, and this entire piece replaces all the needle bearings. So this is going away. We are upgrading it to this style, and another thing is, like I was saying, these are just pressed in, so the new ones are also pressed in but they also have spanner rings just for an extra safety measure so this is the new style that's the old style now we just got to go through and do this to the rest of them and the first thing i want to focus on and the first thing that i want to show you is how we actually get the old trunnion out of there before we focus on how to get the new ones in there this is pretty basic relatively straightforward and easy to do if you have a bench vise you can make this happen so what we have right here is i just have it taped on there so it's a little bit easier this is actually a 12 millimeter socket and that's going to butt up on this side right here and then if you can see these two little flat edges what I have right here is just this 12 point and it's actually a 22 so that's gonna go right there so I just put this like that and the most difficult part of all of this and it's not even difficult it's just getting it lined up if you tape one of the sides or I don't know it just maybe if you had a second person it might be a little bit easier so if we just tighten it down you can see it coming through and then eventually It just pop right out and that's it so we got to do this with all of them disgusting no good and dangerous so here's how they look we got to go through and do this with all of them and then we'll focus on getting the new one in here and i'll show you exactly how we do that as well So now you can see they are all out so what we want to do next is we just want to focus on one side first I'm going to go ahead and get these pressed into the side and then we'll worry about pressing in the other one you can actually press in one without actually putting this in and we'll just go ahead and do that and then go from there So these you don't got to put much pressure on them at all the brass will actually get pressed right in and then these you only got to go as far as until you can feel that it's flush it's going to have a little bit of pressure and then it's just going to have all of the pressure so as soon as you hit that all of the pressure just go ahead and back off because you're good So you can see that's like that. So we're just gonna get all of those knocked out now. So now as we're putting everything back together, one of the most important steps that you cannot forget is if you can see right here, those little grooves are oil passages. So just so I don't forget, we're just gonna be a little crazy. Each edge, just run it down. Now that might be a little bit excessive, but that's just to make sure that I don't forget and I could just keep everything moving and you don't need too much. Once you put it in there, you can rotate it around. So what I have right here is this is just a 16. And the reason why I got a 16 is because you want something that this is just going to barely fit inside because we want this outer edge to actually push against the ring. So if we go ahead and throw this in there, have that poking through, that little poke through will sit down inside of our socket and then once we put this on there we can start that a little bit inside the vise and then once it's started and that's not going to fall out we take another socket the same exact size 
and do the same thing. So that's exactly how it's going to look stacked up inside of the vise. So now that that's all knocked out, I gotta get those put on the heads, but before I can get those put on the heads, I gotta put the heads on the motor. Before I can put the heads on the motor, I gotta go through and do all of these gaskets. I have everything over here. We have the head gasket, we have oil pan gasket, intake manifold gaskets, rear main seals. I just gotta put all of this stuff in, and of course, torque everything down to spec. So I got this right here this little booklet that's gonna tell me all my torque specs and we're just we're just jamming right along I'm gonna get everything put back together and before we know it we're gonna test fire this thing I don't know if I want to test fire it out of the car in case anything gets already out of the car we'll just cross that bridge when we get there All right, so as you can tell, I just had that camera set up for the time lapse and then the camera died and I didn't even realize it and I just kept working. So we have the cylinder head on, we have all new bolts, all the new bolts were supplied by Texas Speed. So we just have these ones right here. And then the way that you have to tighten these down is you have to go through in the sequence and it doesn't exactly say what the sequence is, but what makes sense to me, starting from the inside and then as you're working your way out, crossing your way over, alternating from left, right, front, back, left, right, front, back, all the way from when you get to the inside all the way to the outside that's what I did that's what I think it would be and I think that's gonna be fine so the way that you have to tighten these down is you have to go with 22 foot-pounds of torque and then after that for pass number two you rotate it just 90 degrees out and then pass number three you do 70 degrees so you do them all 22 pounds and then you do the same order but then 90 degrees out on the wrench so for example if you're done with that first pass everything at 22 foot-pounds you have to go 90 degrees you have to do that for all of them so starting here 90 degrees and then you got to come back and do them all 70 degrees now i don't know exactly what 70 degrees is but i know that that's 90 and half of that is 45 so i figured it's about somewhere in this range so the second pass i'm just doing from there to about there and that feels really good now i can put my push rods in and we also have that from texas speed we have chromoly push rods and then i can put my rocker trays back in so with the push rods i'm just doing a little bit of oil a little bit of oil on the tip of each one and also I like to all say Texas speed in the same direction. I don't think it matters, but I like weird stuff like that. All right, now for the tray. Man, so that is looking really good. And just one more thing, something else that I do is I just take a little paint marker, every single one that I torque down, 
I just go through and mark so that way I know that I'm going to be good because in the future I'm going to have to come back to this and unfortunately I am going to have to go for this one because tomorrow morning I'm going to be driving down south to Miami. It's about a three and a half hour drive. That'll definitely be a really cool, really fun video. I'm going to be working on some stuff at a different shop. That's all I'm going to say about that. Just be looking out for that video. Also, I just got word that new shirts just arrived in the next video. I'll show you those shirts or maybe another video after that one. I can actually have some time to show you because by the time I drive down south, I'm not going to and bring the shirts with me to show in either way go check out the site the link will be down in the description below any order that you place right now i'll throw some stickers in the order as well so i think that's going to be it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching like this video comment subscribe do all the stuff you know what it is youtube i'll see you on the next one in miami i'm out